So let's start discussing what are decision trees. For that, we are going to go back to the problem that we had in the logistic regression course, and that's the problem that we are going to be tackling in this course here. So the task that we had was predicting for company X, Y, and Z if their customers were going to renew their one-year subscription plan for the next year. So in other words, we were trying to predict if our customers were going to churn, variable one, yes, or they were not going to churn, in which case they would have a label zero on the churn variable, indicating that they didn't churn. Uh, we were also giving several features of these customers in a data set uh, that included things like the year uh, and, of course, like customer ID, phone number, gender, etc., and all the features that were here. So, again, this is a classification problem. We are trying to predict a label. This In this case, it's a binary label, one for churn, uh, zero for not churning. Right? Um, However, when we did a logistic regression, and you might remember this um, output that we got on Python last time, uh, re logistic regression didn't take us that far. Uh, so we ended up with an area of under the, under the curve of 0.66%, a decent precision for uh, the non-churning customers, but they are not the variable of interest. For the churning customers that are the variable of interest, we had like a very low precision, 0.19%. Um, we actually had mildly decent recall, but again, these precision results are not great, right? Um, I'm showing here the results that we ended up with after correcting for class imbalance with SMOTE. Uh, but as we could see, we did improve, but we didn't improve a lot. So having a different algorithm to perform the classification is actually the next step to think about improving this model. And the first of this more sophisticated algorithms that has a higher possibility of improving the results of logistic regressions are the decision trees. So what are the decision trees? And I'm gonna display a drawing here that's gonna help us think about it. So a decision tree is essentially almost like a, a flow chart to get to a decision. You can think about it this way. Uh, and it's a structure like this. So sometimes it looks even like a, an org chart. So you have here kind of like a root. And from this root, you have like the nodes that split into leaves. Leaves are the end of the trees, right? And how does this tree work? So each of these roots contain a set of samples from our data. The leaves or nodes that, that go from it also have other samples of the da this data after this data is split based on that criteria. So in this case here, uh, we have this first criteria is one of the variables of our data set uh, is if the customer is a multi-screen customer, yes or no. And then this is a split that this tree is making. So if yes, he puts the people in this leaf. Uh, if no, he takes people to this other node. And then this node is not actually a leaf because it's further is split, is split uh, for between people that watched more than 60 minutes and watch less than 60 minutes. And what you're going to find is that at the end of each leaf, I have uh, actual actually a prediction of a label. So I'm going to say that for everybody that is multi-screen, they have insurance. And for people that are not multi-screen, and then I'm that going to check how many minutes they watched. And if they watched more than 60 minutes, I'm going to predict that they didn't churn. But if they watched less, I'm going to predict that they are uh, going to churn. So this is essentially a way of separating our data and coming up with these rules and criteria uh, to build this, uh, to decide who is going to churn and who is not going to churn, right? Uh, so this algorithm is a set of like procedures that allow us to get to this tree here, this format here. And that looks very nice. Now, um, you can probably imagine that the end game here is to try to understand one, uh, how does this algorithm decide when he makes a split or not? Two, how does he decide what are the variables that he uses to split? Right. In this case, we have here is multi-screen and minutes watched as an example. And the third one is like, when does it decide to stop? Right. Uh, so we have here a leaf. So here the algorithm decided to stop, but here he actually continued. So how he actually make these decisions. And it is simpler than we imagine. And it all starts with uh, something that we call impurity measure. So we're going to walk you through that 
uh, in the next video.